We want to be able to apply the binomial theorem when the exponent is something other than a positive integer. And we'll need this before going into chapter 4 of Thompson's Calculus Made Easy. And if binomial theorem is like, what, to you, I've got a one of these places playlist. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to start with kind of a generic expression of the binomial theorem. A plus B all to the power of N equals a bunch of stuff. Okay, and now <clears throat> the thing we, ne we need to focus on is this binomial coefficient. Um, n choose k because we've got n factorial in the numerator and if say n is a half um, or negative five or something like that we don't want one half factorial up there uh, there's a way to deal with that but we don't need to we don't need to go there uh, so let it's best if we look at a specific example. So here's 10 choose 4, uh, which is 10 factorial, 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 7, 7, 1, uh, divided by 10 minus 4 factorial, which is 6 factorial, uh, and then 4 factorial is also in the denominator. And when we lay it all out that way so nicely, you can see uh, that the um, that the 6 factorial portion of the story cancels out. We get keep the 4 factorial in the denominator and see here's the thing. In the numerator we end up with 10 times 10 minus 1 times 10 minus 2 times 10 minus 3. Okay and I think that if we have there's nothing like a really good example to explain. If we just started out with n's and k's and all that uh, we'd be totally lost. At least I would. I would be. This lets us rewrite that uh, a plus b to the power of n like this. We still have the exponents, but nothing gets factorialized except integers. Now we have the factorials of incrementing integers, or however you want to put it, in the denominator. Um, in the numerator, we just have exponents in places where we can deal with them. And then as a coefficient, we get uh, n, and then it's n times n minus 1, and then n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, and so on. And what this does is it shows a pattern in the denominator, which if you're familiar, if you've already done calculus and you've seen how the constant e uh, is represented, it might tweak something. And because remember, we're dealing with exponentials. It's going to come very handy to have in that a plus b have the first term be a one. So you can't really see the use of it here, I don't think, because now we're just dealing with letters. But we can factor out the the a so that now we have a to the power of n is leading and a far different expression. Look how nicely those ones disappear. So I think we should, let's take a look at what that looks like for a plus b to the power of a half so that it makes a little bit more sense. And then when we go and we look at Thompson's chapter 4, you'll see why we wanted to factor out that a and put a, a 1 there. It will become very, very nice. So here's what it looks like when we have one half there. And you could do the, I mean, you could just replace that n with a minus five or whatever you have. And you'll see, play around with this, put numbers in there. And you'll see some pretty interesting things. And now we have what we need to, to dive into chapter four, which will be our next video. Bob's your uncle. Cheers.